Happy Friday, my littles. It is the last day and I hope that you are keeping track of getting all your work finished. So tomorrow and Sunday that you are able to take a break and relax and enjoy some downtime to recharge for our next week of e-learning. Um, just a couple of reminders today. Today in writing, you are going to be going on to the folder below the Friday folder to watch animal presentations from your classmates and you are asked to comment on those. Make sure you read the directions for the specific information that I'm asking you to comment with. And then in our ELA, you are going to be taking your next Read Works quiz, which is on a passage and comprehension questions. Make sure you remember that they're asking for specific text evidence. So make sure you've read it carefully and then you're going back to your text to help you with your answering of your questions. Social studies, you are taking your week 18 open note test. Remember that we have suggested that it's a great idea to reread your articles before you actually take your test so that your information is right and fresh in your brain. And then you have your notes to help you with um, some of the additional information. It is not just on the study guide questions, so make sure that you remember that it is on the entire publication and the articles that you were asked to read this week. Also, make sure that in math that you're finishing up your Khan Academy lessons by Sunday. You've been working with area and perimeter. And then with your vocabulary, you should be finishing up with your vocabulary quiz on capitalization and doing any other work that you might have for iReady. All right, today we are going to be reading a new book called Jimmy Sounds Like a Rainbow. Seattle, Washington, 1956. Electricity ripped through the air. A lightning flash lit up the room. Thunder rocked the house. Jimmy's hand jumped and a rainbow of colored pencils went tumbling to the floor. Outside, a rain began trickling off the roof and plinking into the metal gutter. Drops bounced onto the windowsill. A breeze rippled the glass chimes on the porch. For a moment, Jimmy thought he heard a woman's name being blown on the wind. Jimmy grabbed his one-string ukulele. He could play one simple tune, but now he had a new idea. He pulled a string and let it snap back, tapping gently with his finger up and down the neck to get just the right notes over and over until he could play the sound of raindrops singing as they fell. After the storm, Jimmy stepped out onto the porch of the boarding house where he and his father lived. Down the street, a child was laughing, squealing like a clarinet on one of dad's big band records. A truck engine backfired, pounding like a bass drum as a neighbor's rake played snare against the sidewalk. A dog yowled, a siren wailed in the distance, and a bird rattled off a string of high, wild notes. The sounds of life were calling out, and Jimi Hendrix wanted to answer them. Terry and Potato Chip waved from across the street. They loved Jimmy's drawings, the funny stories he told, the way he could imitate guitars and trumpets with his mouth and hands. And they never teased him about his worn out clothes and wild hair, the way some kids did, or because he was always moving from one part of town to another when dad was out of work. They were the three musketeers, best friends for life. Down at the record store, the boys checked out the top 10 hits each week. Crazy about music, they would chatter for hours about the latest rock and roll songs, Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and B.B. King. The airwaves were sizzling with exciting new sounds and rhythms. Sometimes Jimmy and his friends bicycled down to the lake, a magical place of deep green leaves and dark purple shadows. They throw rocks in the water, listening to them plop and gurgle as they sink. All around, there were birds singing, bees buzzing, and breezes whistling through trees. Above the clouds, airplane engines droned and whirled. With every sound, a color glowed in Jimmy's mind. Blue was the whoosh of cool water splashing over rocks. Orange and red, the crackling of a campfire. Green, the rustle of a thousand leaves. 
At home, Jimmy drew and painted for hours. He filled pages with sleek, fine spaceships, knights on horseback, fierce Indian chiefs, and castles in the clouds. A teacher even let him cover the blackboards once with chalk drawings of Mexico in bold, blazing yellows, purples, and reds. Jimmy's imagination was on fire, and a tune was always playing in his head. At night, he listened to Dad croon along with gospel, jazz, or blues records on the old phonograph. A song by Muddy Waters with its wailing guitar and harmonica set off fireworks in his mind. He wondered, could a person with music like use music like chalks and colored pencils? Could someone paint pictures with sound? Sweeping up his rim one day, Jimmy stopped and held a broom in his arms. He strummed on the bristles, sliding his fingers back and forth along the wooden handle. Was this what it felt like to hold a real guitar, to swing it up and down to make music while you sang? On the radio, Elvis Presley hit Hound Dog, shook the speaker. Elvis was a king, twisting and shouting to the beat of rock and roll. Jimmy strummed the broom again. Pieces of straw went flying into the air as he wiggled his hips like Elvis and sang his heart out for an imaginary audience of screaming fans. Sitting on the porch one night, Jimmy watched as the landlady's son cradled a worn wooden guitar in his lap and began to sing. The man's voice was dark and smooth like velvet. The blues, they, the blues, they is a lonely sound, like the whistle of a train full of tender feelings and pouring down like rain. Notes spun from the strings flickering in the air like fireflies. Jimmy's eyes shone. He could feel the music tingling in the fingertips. When the landlady's son offered to sell his guitar for $5, Jimmy begged Dad to buy it. Now he had an instrument of his own. Night after night, he'd sit alone in his room, plunk, plunk, plunking along for hours. On a small transistor radio, Jimmy tuned in his favorite songs and learned them note for note. From Dad's old blues records, he soaked up the gritty sounds of guitar masters, Lightning Hopkins and Howlin' Wolf. He practiced and practiced, training his ears and hands, and each day he got a little better. Before long, Jimmy could play the guitar while Potato Chip sang or jam with Terry as his fingers tingled the keys of an old piano in the basement. Every note and every chord was like a new color for Jimmy. He had a rainbow of sounds at his fingertips and he wanted to paint the world with them. Soon, Jimmy played well enough to join a local band, but when he first performed on stage, the screaming saxophone, pounding drums, and rocking piano drowned out his old wooden guitar. He felt invisible. If he wanted to be heard, he'd need a louder guitar, an electric guitar. Money was tight, but Dad could see what music meant to his son. It may have been the cheapest model, but to Jimmy, his new white Supro Ozark guitar was pure gold. Now he could plug into an amplifier, turn up the volume, and hold his own in the band. Practicing at a friend's house one day, Jimmy heard the amplifier making strange and eerie sounds. Out of the speaker came buzzes and whistles, fuzzy hissing and a raspy humming. Strumming the guitar made the noises shift and change. By turning knobs and stretching guitar strings, Jimmy found that he could play with the different sounds. He ran his fingers up and down the neck, tapping and scraping, clucking, sliding and picking, and then a smile flashed across his face. Suddenly, the room filled with a rocket's roar, crashing waves, the buzz of swarming bees. Jimmy was finally painting the sound. Like no one before, Jimi Hendrix taught his guitar to sing, scream, laugh, and cry. He learned to use it as an artist uses paint, creating new worlds with the colors of sound. To the heart and soul of the blues, he added the restless energy of rock and roll. His playing became bold as lightning, wild as the waves, free as the wind through the trees. Dressed in the colors of the rainbow, he played for audiences far and wide. Joining, they sounded sounds with tender feelings and painting the world with the songs. Don't let nobody turn you off from your own thoughts and dreams. And that's
ESPN. So this is um, a story about a real life musician, Jimi Hendrix. So I love the way that the author described with such a um, beautiful description of how he felt about his music and his love of painting with the tunes. So today in our comments, I want you to mention something that you have taught yourself how to do um, that took your own time and energy and your own focus. All right, my littles, have a great Friday. See you later for Fun Friday. Bye.